Welcome to episode 65, Jim Simon's 10 Rules. This is an outline of episode 65. There are two big surprises from Jim Simon. First, he became interested in math at the age of four. At age 44, he founded Renaissance Technology, the hedge fund. In between, there are 40 years. Second, he's the only self-made billionaire I know who married twice, and each wife has a PhD. His first wife is Barbara Brustein Simons, who is a famous professor. His second wife is Marilyn Simon, who has a PhD in econometrics. Rule number one, how did he build computer models? Jim Simons is a pioneer in computer model trading. It took him eight years to transition from fundamental trading to 100% computer model trading. We kept fundamental trading, but more and more we were trading the models. And finally, it took about eight years. Uh, the models were good enough, and we went to all models. And then we started the company. Rule number two, the secret of models is they are made up of many, many small secrets. Okay, well, what, what's the secret? And, and well, there are a lot of little secrets because the way this works, you have a lot of uh, smart guys and they keep inching away and getting a new idea here and a new idea there and you pile them together and soon you have an awful lot of little ideas that are independent of each other and uh, you can, you know, you can uh, make, some, make some progress. Rule number three, there's only one rule. Never override the computer. The only rule is we never override the computer. No one ever comes in any day and says, the computer wants to do this, that's crazy, we shouldn't do it. it you don't do it. Because you can't, you can't simulate that. You can't study the past and wonder whether the boss was going to come in and change, change his mind about something. So you just stick with it, and it's, and it's, uh, and it's worked. So, well. Rule number four, the secrets to building successful organizations. There are three parts. The secret sauce was really, in the first instance, having very smart people working for the firm. We, we, were, we built a terrific infrastructure. The computer guys are wonderful. Uh, so we take in, uh, I think it takes in uh, nine, nine terabytes a day of data comes into that outfit. And it all gets stored and organized and, and, and dished up to the researchers and so on. So it's a great infrastructure. It's an open atmosphere. Everybody knows what everybody else is doing. And every, every week there's a research meeting. If you've had a good idea that you, and you think it's going to go somewhere, you present it. If it looks good, it's, it goes to a small meeting. People vet it more carefully. But there aren't little groups uh, working in the dark. Oh, this is my little system, and I want you to use it. So, and that's the best way to do science, I think, uh, in, a, in a collaborative manner. Sure, you don't immediately, the first time you get have a thought, you don't run down the hallway saying, I have a thought, but... Uh, Rule number five, find and partner with wonderful people. Now, I've partnered with a lot of people, and I think that partnering with people is terrific, but you want to partner with wonderful people. And the, the names I've mentioned, uh, Churn and Sullivan and, and uh, David Eisenbud, uh, outstanding people. And uh, you can leverage your own efforts and uh, you know, sometimes get, you know, partner up with people who are smarter than you, but that's fine. And uh, it, it's, but just have good choice and partners. Rule number six, be original. Don't follow the herd. Don't run with the pack. Try to, try to do something that's, that's original. Well, of course you want to do something original, but sometimes it's in, in math or in science in general, everyone's kind of running to solve the same problem, do the same thing. If you're really fast, maybe you're going to be the winner. But uh, it's better, uh, I think, uh, probably you're not going to be the winner. But if, if you can sort of do an end run around things, think about something that other people aren't thinking about, that's, that's a, a pretty good way to, to do things. Rule number seven, be persistent, be patient. Uh, principle is don't give up. Persistence has a lot of value and something that's really worthwhile can take a lot of time to come to fruition and you ought to have patience uh, if you believe in something to, uh, uh, to stick with it. And my final principle is uh, hope for good luck. <laughs> and that's it.
So thank you very much. Rule number eight, you need common sense. It was a time when gold was going up. Uh, gold had, be, had been, Lenny, Lenny Baum and I, well, we'd each have the same, we'd each have our own account. I was the boss, but we each had our own account. And in our own account, in fact, we both bought gold. We're supposed to be independent, we both like gold. The gold was going up. It, was, it started at 200 and 300 and 400 $500. It got to $500, which by today's standards would be like fifteen or $1,800. Uh, and I said, you know, this is, this is a very high price. I, I, I'm getting out. I, I, and I sold my half. But Lenny, I think you should. No, he, you don't know how high this is going to go. You can't. This is going to uh, go very, very high. I said, okay. So he stayed. It was 600 It was 700 was 800 got to $800. That day, I happened to be talking to a friend of mine on the phone who was a stockbroker. And he, in fact, he was my stockbroker. And uh, I said, how are things, Dick? And he said, oh, well, they're fine. This morning, my wife, Lucy, uh, came into my closet and cleaned out all of my uh, uh, t old tie clasps and cufflinks and went downtown to sell them. They were gold. They were gold, see? I said, well, are you, are you having a hard time in your family? Why is she, see, your wife said, oh, he says, you know, she's a jeweler. I said, yes, I know that. So he said, so she only has to stand in the short line. I said, what do you mean, the short line? He says, don't you know that people are lining up and standing for hours selling their gold? I said, no, I didn't know that. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I got Lenny in the office, and I put the phone up to his ear, and I said, Lenny, sell the gold. In fact, I, and he said, no, 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 no. I said, Lenny, I'm the boss. Sell the blankety-blank gold. I was uh, more emphatic uh, than that. He said, all right, all right. So he sold the gold, and maybe it was $810. Oh, but he was mad. And the next day, we came in, and it opened at $830. And oh, he said, I, I told you. By the end of that day, it had dropped 25%. It was down to $600 all in one day. And it never, of course, went back up. So that is an example of common sense and very good luck. Rule number nine, try to hire non-finance people. Hire scientists rather than finance type. Academics ourselves, we had an idea of who was a good scientist and who wasn't, and we brought in and continued to bring in excellent people, not just mathematicians, but uh, computer scientists, statisticians, uh, experimental physicists, uh, uh, astronomers, we got. Rule number 10, you need some luck. You need luck because there are tragedies and the unexplainables in life. For example, two of his children die of tragic accident. At age 20, Jim Simons himself almost died in Columbia in 1958, when he just graduated from MIT. Well, he was lucky, but his two sons were not. This is a picture of his son, Nick Simons, who died in a deep driving accident in Bali in 2003. I graduated uh, MIT, I, I, those dates, 58. I did something that was actually um, an example of uh, having no common sense at all. In those days, motor scooters had just been becoming popular. You know, Vespas, and uh, they were Italian. It was either a Vespa or a Lambretta. Those were the two. And we got the motor scooters, and a third guy joined the gang. And we, we did get halfway. We got to Bogota, and that took seven weeks. And uh, uh, I, at least, almost died. Uh, I came extremely close to death. Uh, I think I never told my mother that. Uh, if my mother had had the slightest idea of uh, how dangerous that trip was, she wouldn't let me go, but for some reason she, she did. So it was, uh, it was lucky on that account, but it sh showed little signs of common sense. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. Wishing everyone Peace and prosperity.